Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Matty Collins and in today's video we're going to be talking about my trusty friend, the Canon RP. I've had this camera for about two years now and I'm going to be letting you guys know who it's designed for should you pick it up in 2022, the pros and the cons of photo, video and then the feature set. Um, so that's pretty much it. Let's dive in. Okay, before we jump into the pros and cons of this camera, I just really want to say that it is an amazing camera, spoiler alert. It comes in at $999 US dollars for a full frame mirrorless camera, and that to me is absolutely a steal of a deal. So let's now dive into the pros of the photography. So this thing shoots at 26 megapixels and I can easily pass the images off to any client and they don't know that I shot it on this really cheap Canon RP camera. So I love that about it. The 26 megapixels allows me to crop in in post and I love doing that uh, just for camera composition and things like that just in case I messed up. Um, I use it a lot for uh, nightclubs and things like that with just like a simple flash attached to it and it's been absolutely amazing for that. Uh, number two in terms of video, yeah this camera is like pretty sick uh, for video I guess but um, actually I oversold it. It's just okay. The 1080p on this camera is fine, uh, the autofocus is good and it can shoot at 60 frames per second in 1080p. 4K, uh, honestly, the fact that it has 4K, I guess I'll put that as a pro for now, but we'll talk about how it's kind of lackluster in the 4K performance later in this video. Number three is the feature set of this camera. So uh, the feature set is amazing because the biggest thing that I like about it as a content creator and a YouTuber is that it has the mic input and then it also has a headphone jack as well. And monitoring audio levels is absolutely necessary if I'm shooting anything for client work and things like that. So I do love that about this camera. I'll also say that having an RF mount on this camera is a plus. There's, they're kind of expensive right now, but they're coming out with cheaper and cheaper RF uh, glass. But what I did, because I was on a really tight budget, is I just got the RF to EF adapter, um, as you can see here. And what I did is I just kind of scoured Craigslist and things like that for super cheap EF glass. And then I just converted that on. Um, this made this a, like a super budget option. I got some really nice glass for pretty cheap, like. Most recently I picked up a 16 to 35 2.8 Canon L lens. Um, that to me is like a beast of a lens, I love it. And I know it's EF mount, but converted to this, the autofocus is really good. And I think I got it for like 600 bucks, so pretty cheap. All right, and the last thing that I will say about this camera in terms of the good for the feature set is that it has this fully articulating screen. I know some creators are like mixed on this, especially if you're a photographer, but I'm a hybrid shooter and I love of having the fully articulating screen, especially for vlogging. And I've done a lot of vlogging in the past two years on this camera. So anyways, that's it for the good. Really quick, if you guys are enjoying this video, please be sure to give it a like, a thumbs up, because it goes a really long way in helping the channel get noticed. And I'm really trying to dive into this YouTube thing. I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the comment sections and things like that, and just hearing from you anything about photography and filmmaking. Now we're gonna look at the cons of this camera. So um, this definitely won't be amazing for any type of action photography that you're shooting, uh, sports and, and things of that nature. If you're in servo mode, which is like, um, it's going to autofocus track your subject as they're moving and you don't have to click and refocus and things like that. I'm often in servo mode. You only get four frames per second in burst mode. And then other than that, if you're in one shot mode, you're gonna get five frames per second, which is still quite low in 2022 for a camera. Uh, last thing that I'll say is the noise in uh, high ISO shooting. Um, you can get a lot of like noise out of these images. However, um, that's not the end of the world. It's not an amazing uh, camera for low light and I think everyone kind of knows that we're coming in on a budget. And the good thing about that is that you can remove it in Lightroom. Now let's talk about the cons for video. And to be honest, unfortunately, this is where this camera kind of falls apart and really shows its price point. So first thing I'll talk about is the 1.6 times crop 
in 4K. So immediately when you're shooting at like 24, 30 frames per second, which I think is all you can do on this camera, it's, it's coming in at a 1.6 times crop. And that's super annoying uh, to, if you're just like carrying one lens around and things like that, or if you're trying to get like a wide field of view and you have a 16 and then it like 1.6 times punches in on that. So that's super annoying. Um, also uh, on paper, there is 4K, but at the end of the day, autofocus is really important to a lot of us creators. And you don't really get autofocus with this. It says there's an autofocus, but holy smokes, it takes forever to actually focus. I did a whole video about it and I can link it here. But honestly, it doesn't have autofocus. Let's just say that for the purpose of this. Um, you pretty much have to be prepared to manually focus if you're using 4K, which is okay some of the time, but it's just a really big workaround and I wouldn't recommend this camera for 4K whatsoever. And then lastly, uh, the in-body stabilization on this camera is sus, like a little bit suspect. It's not the best thing going and if you do that, say you did that in 4K, now you're cropping in even further because that active stabiliz stabilization is turned on. So again, a lot of cons for the video feature set of this camera and don't really recommend it if you are a video shooter or a hybrid hoping to get like a great photography camera and a great video camera. Maybe the RP is not the best for you probably just jump right to the R6. So we're almost done this video, but the last thing I wanted to talk about was the feature set of this camera and the negative parts of that. So really quick, we did already talk about the camera lens selection. Uh, to me, this is a pro, what I've already talked about, but the zooms, if you want that 16 to 35, or I think it's 15 to 35 RF, that's crazy expensive. The 24 to 70, 2.8, crazy expensive and things like that. So you can't really get like an all-in-one pretty cheap lens unless you adapt it. So that is kind of a con. Also, the battery life on this camera is suspect as well. I think I walk around with five of these batteries because for all day shooting, you're gonna need at least three and probably four. Um, it has a 30 minute record limit on it. So um, that's gonna be unfortunate if you're using it for any type of client work or things like that. Uh, even some personal work that can get really annoying. It only has one SD card slot, so you don't have you know, that backup if necessary. And ergonomically, it is pretty small of a camera. And I guess that's good, but in my eyes, if you put a bigger lens on it, it just doesn't feel right in the hands. So ergonomically, don't love that. So all in all, this camera is a sneaky powerhouse for photography in 2022 if you are on a budget. Am I gonna be keeping it? Yes, I am going to be. For my uh, feature set and what I need in my life right now, I'm a YouTuber and I also have some client work and things like that. It's done me wonders for my nightclub shoots and even events and things like that. So I will keep it around for photography and I like just having a second camera in the bag, but I recently did upgrade to the Sony a7 IV, which is what I'm shooting on now, and I've done a lot of videos about that recently on the channel if you wanna check that out. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. If you wanna see more content on the Canon RP, I will be uh, keeping it in the bag, and I will be talking about it um, on the channel, specifically with a Canon log that I found a way to put on my Canon RP. So if you wanna know how I did that and how I color grade that, I was thinking about doing a video about that. But anyways, let me know in the comment section below. We'll see you in the next video. Maddie out, peace and love.